And we're live. Hey, everybody. Welcome into the Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star. Today is May 4th. So may the fourth be with you, fellow Star Wars fans. I've been waiting all year to say that one. What a dork. Uh, it is Tuesday, so it is time for my live show. And I still have these on. They're reflecting very badly. Um, I have a special guest with me tonight, Megan Mawinney. And she's here to talk about Summer Slowdown. Megan, say hi to the folks. Hey, you guys. Thanks for having me, Star. Hey, thanks for coming on. Uh, kind of last minute. I asked her less than a week ago. So, no, um, you accommodated my timing needs after the kids went to bed. Yes, I'm happy to um, change the time to have you on. So, if you guys don't know Megan and you're just one of my viewers, um, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself? I would love to. My name is Megan. I am a full-time eBay reseller. I do a little bit on Poshmark, but 99% of me is eBay. Um, I started reselling about four years ago full-time when I had my first son. The bank I was working at couldn't accommodate the daycare hours we needed because my husband is in the Army, active duty. So I ended up leaving my banking job to do eBay full-time. And so here I am four years later, and it's going good. Probably about the hundredth time I've said this, but you can tell John, thank you for his service. I will tell him. And then you can thank me too, because I have to put up with him being gone all yeah. the time. <laughs> it is hard to be a military wife. I understand. I, my first husband was a Marine, so. Yeah, it's um, exhausting, but we're getting ready to move probably again in another year or so. So it's exciting to get to kind of pick up and go all over the country and see new places to source inventory from. Um, I'm going to say hi to some folks in the chat real quick. I see that this is the first live show Rhonda and Amelia have come to with Jason, their their husband and father. It's it's it went from a mother and daughter team to a mother father daughter team trio on eBay. So the whole family is now full time. So congratulations on that, Jason. I'm glad you were finally able to join the girls full time. That's awesome. Um, yeah, Rhonda and Amelia have been longtime viewers. In fact, I have hippo magnets on my fridge. I think about you guys every time I look at them <laughs> that you guys sent me. Um, San Francisco is here. Swimmerization. Lisa, Thrifty Falconer's wife. Um, I can't see now that I have these off, right? But put them back on to read the chat. <laughs> look at the, how bad they reflect, though. And I look like a dork. Hey, you the fourth be with you. <laughs> Uh, Hunter71 is here, a new eBay seller, Shannon, um, says you guys are the best. And hey, my other favorite human being, Robert's here, Zombie Bargain Hunter. Hey, Robert. Um, and Leah is here. So yeah, I'm building I'm building my own royal court. That's what Keith asked me. He's like, you call Megan the Jean Queen and Robert the other plush king. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm building my own royalty of eBay. <laughs> what are you calling yourself? The plush queen. Oh, you're plush queen? Okay. I'm queen, queen of the East. Queen, and he's queen. Queen, the king of the West. But <laughs> he's everywhere. I'm queen so. of the South, I guess, because I'm down in Texas. Yeah. Uh, Robert, nope, not Robert. David and Bill are here. <laughs> Noman the Frog, how are you guys? I'm about to choke on Pepsi. <laughs> Caffeinated Christy is here. I'm going to be a little different off because it's two hours later than normal for me so I'm a little extra caffeinated um Pepsi maxinated <laughs> I've got water <coughs> excuse me all right so um if you're not following Megan I forgot to put your stuff in the box because I'm a terrible host that's okay it's I'm just my name Mawinnie Megan if you're on Instagram and then YouTube is just Megan Mawinnie that's it Easy. You guys can see your name right there. Um, oh, and if you didn't know, Henry and Hannah are here. They're hanging out in the back, but you can't see them when Megan and I are large. They're here. Say hi, people. Hannah left today. I couldn't find her. I thought she quit. <laughs> You're not even paying them. How can they quit? <laughs> <laughs> they get food. Um, That's true. Room and board. They're fat. They need a lot. Um. Anyway. So Megan Mawinney on YouTube, Mawinney Megan on Instagram, and she does primarily thrift blue jeans. Yes, like 
Okay, maybe 80% denim and then another like 10% pants and then a tiny bit of like top shoes, dresses, etc. But pretty heavily in denim. All my eggs are in one basket, as you could say. Which isn't good. No. Don't so be like us, you guys. Yes, do as we say, not as we do. Because <laughs> um, I'm, I'm very heavily... Um, well, see, but I have keys, and we have those T-shirts. So I don't know if you knew, but we bought 3,000 T-shirts with Casey, and half, half of them shipped here. Where have I been? I didn't know that. Um, Boy, this was back in January, February. Wow. It's been a so, while since I've been on your show, so we haven't yeah. had a chance to catch up. And I haven't been doing as much updating on social media or YouTube because we're packing, but... Um, so shirts, um, are they just t-shirts or are they? Well, there were jerseys, which okay. are fun for nerds like me and Keith are like, what, what is this sport? What is this team? But yes, Casey, I don't know any sports at all. So I'd look at and have to like Google image search, like every single logo. <laughs> yeah. Well, we unboxed a bunch of them on Casey's channel, which is why I was surprised you hadn't heard. I um, guess I didn't see it. You're making me look so bad. Yeah, I didn't know anything. <laughs> that's okay. You're busy. Um, yeah, we unboxed a bunch of them on Casey's YouTube, and um, he was telling me the sports and the, and the type of sport as we went, because, I mean, I know, like, the Steelers, but... Because you're in Pennsylvania, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, but we have, like, one that sold for $100 because it was a special... He was actually in either the Marine Corps or the Army, Tillman. He was on the Arizona Cardinals, and he quit NFL to join and go fight overseas, and he died. And they had a special limited edition camo jersey with Arizona Cardinals, new with tags in there. Wow. That's yeah. just, see, I would know nothing about that at all. I'd probably just toss it into, like, the Goodwill donate pile, like, oh, an old jersey. Well, it was a jersey yes. new with tags. I don't know if you would have tossed it. Uh Okay, yeah, I knew with tags I would have put it up. I probably would have done, like, I don't know, $20. I wouldn't have even, like, researched it. Yeah. So it was primarily T-shirts, like Star Wars and sports. So most of the stuff in the box, and like Bob Marley, um, old, we had a couple of vintage concert T-shirts in there. So I, I would say the um, average, most items are selling between 12 and 40 that's pretty good to get some. It's of a pretty good range. And they're lightweight. They can go first class. So, yeah. And then uh, a lot of the jerseys are 40, 50, 60. And then we had a couple that were in the hundreds. So, oh, I didn't realize that with the jerseys. See, I'm so like just in denim. Like, I'm, I guess I pass up on a lot of these other really cool things. There was a girl on Instagram today posting like some. I know it's totally random, uh, cast iron skillet that she got for a dollar and sold for like 60. And I was like, what? I just I would accept that. cast iron stuff to Goodwill last week for free. Now I want to go back and get it. I would have kept it. Oh my God. I was raised by a Southern grandma and her cast iron skillet was like this whole big thing. It was seasoned and it was... <laughs> You cut I, kept in skillet. It. I kept one that my sister got me for Christmas and I had like a couple of the random ones. I'm like, oh, I'm never going to use these. I just donated them. And today I saw on Instagram like 50, 60 bucks. Yeah, they're like pyrex. You don't want to get rid of cast iron. Yeah, I didn't know. See, don't do as we say, not as we do. I'm yeah. just so into jeans. I don't know anything about anything else. So Debbie says, when and where are you moving? That must be someone else who's behind the times. <laughs> We've been talking about moving for a year. Um, we are moving to Florida. We have some stuff that we have to wrap up here with our family and um, litigation-wise. But um, I think I mentioned that on a couple live shows ago. I never really signed a disclaimer, but I don't feel like I really want to talk about it publicly until it's all over with. Just, but, just wait. Don't jinx it. Yeah. I had to sue my former employer, um, and we have to wrap up the last hearing before we can go anywhere. And we got some family. Um, you guys know how hard it is to move across the country when you got family, but we got to do that. Um, before we move on, I was just going to show you. I pulled this out to show Megan. This is one of my diamond dot paintings. And this if you look, new to me as well. I didn't even know what this was. Yeah, they're little dots that you put on. They're color coded, kind of like cross stitching. And I have finished two. I have a Baby Yoda one that is complete. And then this Pennywise, you see him there? Mm -hmm. And Jordan. 
And I have started on a third one that is very similar to the um, background on my phone. It looks like this, only it's red. So it's Freddie, Jason, and Michael Myers. Okay, I can see it. Yeah, and I'm, fr I'm going to be framing all of them for when we move to our new house. All right. Are you working on your decor? Yes. Well, I actually, someone recommended those to me as a soother for someone with anxiety, OCD, and or insomnia. And I happen to have all three diagnosed. Um, so I'm like, you know what? I do them like for an hour or two before bedtime. My anxiety and my OCD is like all time best under control and my insomnia has been better it's very soothing i watch murder shows while i do it <laughs> this is your issue though i think is that these murder shows are not good for anxiety and insomnia like you're gonna be up like in bed all night like i don't know like nah. about the murder <laughs> no because I, I they don't affect me the way they do other people like in another life if i had lived another life, I think I would have been an FBI profiler or a psychologist. Or a psychopath. No. <laughs> I just like how their minds work. I don't want to be one of them. See, um, the opposite. I am, I am so scared of scary movies and murder shows. Like, I have bad dreams about it for, like, weeks, months. I'm scared of the dark. Like, I can't do anything like that. I'm a really big wimp, and I'm just scared of everything. Oh, no. I... <laughs> Binge, binge horror movies all weekend long, and I watch true crime all day while I'm working, and while I do those, and Keith calls it my dots and murder time. <laughs> Are you going to go to dots and murder? murder? Shows and then doing your little, like, soothing dots. <laughs> it is soothing for me. I'm like, oh, I'll just talk to the show. I'm like, so he was a sociopath with psychopathic tendencies, and I'm just putting the dots <laughs> I'd like those two things shouldn't go together. Like Dots and Murder. It's going to be my new YouTube channel once we move. I'm going to call it Dots and Murder with Stars. And I'm going to do the show. I'm going to talk about murder, and you guys can watch me do paintings. You know, people do, like, those uh, mukbang YouTube things where they, like, eat and, like, talk to the camera. So you could totally do that. It could be, like, a soothing, yeah. relaxing show while you do your little craft and while you, like, do commentary on, like, the murder show. Yeah, if you've ever seen Bailey, what's her name? She's Bailey. She does her makeup and talks about murder. I've seen those on Facebook, and for those weren't super scary to me because it was just like a regular girl like talking about it. But some of those TV shows where they get like really into it and have like the scary music and stuff, I can't do that. I love it. <laughs> I've always wanted to have like a true crime podcast or YouTube channel or ghost hunting channel. So we'll see what yeah, happens maybe. once I, I move. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, back to the topic at hand, summer slowdown, right? So the thing is, a lot of people say it's a myth. I'm, I, I'm trying to say how to say this nicely, and I really shouldn't care because you guys know me. I like to give out tough love and drop swears sometimes. But some people actually swear that this is a, a myth, and that's bullshit. It's not. It really depends on... Um, what you're selling and that was me totally pulling back the veil and not trying to figure out how to say it nicely but i mean it just is what it is if you sell something that's in high demand and has like a one percent sell through rate you're not going to experience summer slowdown you're just not if all you sell is let's say for instance dvd vcr combos <laughs> not talking about anyone in particular no i'm not throwing the gauntlet down on anyone <laughs> But if that's all you're selling, you're probably, I mean, I would think that even those sales would slow down just a tick in the summer because less people are staying home to watch movies. More people are out canoeing and hike, whatever you people that go outside that aren't nerds do. Me, I'm still inside watching movies, reading books, but um, I would think that even in the summer, more folks are doing outdoorsy stuff, getting outside, going on vacation, doing things with their kids. Um, this may be all pre-COVID misconceptions of how the world is today because I really don't know. But, um, yeah, there are certain things that summer slowdown will not affect. But the bottom line, if you sell used clothing, summer slowdown is 1,000 million percent real. <laughs> it happens. It will happen to you. It happens to me. It happens to Megan every year. It just 
is just like how most sales will tick up in Q4, they're going to tick down in Q3. It just is. It's a, it's a fact of life. Um, do you have anything you want to add to that? Um, I do. And I think maybe the reason it affects me and you so much and the reason we're so I know, adamant about this is because we're not as diversified as some people are. So because most of my store is jeans, I really do see that slowdown in the summertime. You know, if you're diversified, like, I don't know, 25% jeans, yeah, like another 25% in like dresses and swimsuits, like maybe you don't see it as much. But for people who sell items that have a seasonality to them, you're definitely going to see a slowdown at some point of the year, depending on what you're primarily selling. So, you know, for some yeah. people, they don't see it because they're not as, they're more diversified. But for me, I definitely see it. Yeah, and I mean, Keith brought up a valid point because I was talking to him today. Um, we went to Walmart for groceries, and on the way home, I'm like getting his feedback because he won't come on camera. But he he made two really good points. He said the first one is if anybody uh, um, if anybody is is insisting that this is a myth, that's like telling somebody. Um, in a state like Pennsylvania, where it gets really cold in the winter, but we have really, really hot, humid summers. If you're selling winter jackets on the corner all year, you can't tell that person their sales aren't going to be different when it's warm. Because you sell winter coats in the winter, and then you sell swimsuits on the corner. In the so if, if you're diversified, you don't notice it. But someone who tells someone who isn't as diversified that it's a myth, that it's... You can't do that. Like, yeah, it's not apples to apples. Like you, yeah, it's apples to oranges. Else. And then the other really good point Keith said was, there's a very valid reason why your stores don't sell swimsuits in the winter, and they don't put out their sandals in the winter. They have out their winter coats, their scarves, their snow boots, and again, that can be where you live though. If you go down to Florida, they're not selling parkas in the winter. I mean, I've been to Florida in the winter and I've bought a swimsuit <laughs> off the rack at Walmart. So um, it just depends where you live. Again, um, Walmart in Florida probably still carry sunscreen and touristy things and swimsuits all year round. And they're probably like out in the front, too, whereas, you know, like here in Texas, you know, they bring out the summer stuff at summertime and it's like out front on like the end caps, like as soon as you walk in the store, but some places that stuff might be out like all year long because especially if it's a tourist destination. Yeah, exactly. And like, if you live somewhere that the seasons change and there's actual different climates, like it is two different worlds here. The winters here are like the arctic and the summers are like you expect a hobbit to walk up and drop his ring any minute <laughs> into the <laughs> into the pit and i think in general though the u.s as a whole like in the winter time it tends to kind of be winter everywhere like it's not going to be okay so it could i guess what i'm trying to say is you know in december most states are colder and in the mm -hmm. summertime most states are warmer obviously it's opposite if you went down to like um, australia but in general i think the u.s does have a seasonality when it comes to parkas generally do well in the winter as a whole swimsuits you know typically do better in the spring and summer as a whole just like a generalization of the u.s yeah i agree it's fine that you brought up australia because i've been reading um an australian author her name is Liam Mortuary. I can never say her last name. Is she did the Big Little Lies. Hmm? Is I it think a scary you've heard. book? No, no. And they're really good. Um, if you've heard of the show called Big Little Lies. I think I've heard of it, but I've never, never seen it. I don't know what it's about. I've heard the name. So, like, all her books, I, I don't know how to explain them. There's always a mystery, like something you're reading towards figuring out what happened, but it's not scary. It's like you're reading about a married couple fighting and, and they're alluding to something really bad happened, but you don't know what it is until you get to the end. And she jumps in time. But all her books take place in Australia, and I get so confused sometimes because I forget when she's saying it's summer and it's December, and then it's winter and June there. So it's like the opposite of us. Yeah. And they eat a lot of different foods. And on that, one good thing, I guess, to help with 
this summer slowdown is to make sure you're in like the GSP and the international standard delivery program, because that's going to help counteract the seasonality of some of the items that you're selling in the U S because in other parts of the world, they're opposite of us with the season. So that can kind of, I don't know, I wouldn't say help diversify you, but help you reach a larger audience that may have a need for the items that you're selling that are just not, you know, a good seller mm -hmm. during that time. Well, of year. That's part of diversifying. You go, you got to get on different platforms. So you're not just all on one platform and you've got to be willing to ship internationally. And if you're not willing to do it on your own, I'm going to tell you, I'm not, I use global shipping program. Um, I know Megan, not Megan, Katie and Vicky use pirate ship and they swear it's cheaper and easier for the buyer. And that's great. But I think it's too much of a risk and a pain in the ass. So I use global. But I think you should have it on either way. Um, yeah. But and it is part Go ahead. And the international standard delivery program, too, which you can opt into now, that's given me more sales than GSP. But it is a little bit risky, but not quite as risky as doing it all on your own international. I, did, I didn't even look into that. That was something we were just like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just be global until we get relocated and... The only um, thing I don't like about it, so it's it's just like GSP, except for like the Canada orders, those you end up getting a customs form printed out and they go straight to Canada, but they do go to the eBay warehouse, get repackaged and then sent out. But if it gets lost in transit, you're on the hook. So GSP is obviously the best option, but I have found myself making more sales with the international standard delivery program. So it's just a matter of outweighing whether yeah, more sales. Yeah, take the risk or not. Yeah. But I think that's all part of diversifying. You want to get different items, different platforms, and sell to different eyeballs. Yeah. That's so basically just, for, if you guys can remember the, those three things, different items, different <laughs> platforms, and different eyeballs. That's a good way to just sum it up. Three yep. things. Sounds like a tornado horn. That, my friends, is the fire hall right down the road. We live like two blocks from the police station and the fire hall. And whenever there's a fire, it sounds like World War II out there. Like, get under your desk and cover your head. They, um, we have tornado sirens here, and they test them once a month on, like, the first Saturday. And they're loud kind of like that, too. And you just hear, like, this siren light going off. But they test them once a month. And my kids are always looking around like, what is that? This is all day long every day. Oh I don't even hear it anymore until someone points it out to me. <laughs> That's going to be annoying. But you said you, you can't tell. So. No, I hardly hear the trains anymore. But I can um, hear it. It's pretty loud. <laughs> Let's look at the chat. I haven't even been paying attention. I'm sure there's a bunch of comments. No, there's really not. There's We're boring. Not. Nobody has anything to say to us. <laughs> um, so I think the point is, is summer slowdown is a real thing, but it depends on what you're selling. So if you are a, not a used clothing seller, you probably may not notice it as much and think it's a myth, but used clothing sellers will tell you it's it's real and it happens like we see i see at least and i think you said you two in q1 q4 is good for everybody but in q1 there's usually a huge uptick in sales for used clothing and i think that's because people are more willing to spend money on themselves when they get a tax return absolutely and it's the start of like a new year so i feel like everyone is you know, like new year, new me, like, you know, going to get something for myself. I'm going to do this new thing this year. So that's kind of when I feel like everyone is initially like buying things for themselves because it's kind of like this fresh start, you know, um, you know, I'm going to go to the gym and work out every week. So now I'm going to go buy, you know, five Lululemon outfits. I'm going to go get some cute workout gear, you know, or some cute shoes for the gym, or I'm going to start playing hockey. You know, let me get some stuff for them. <laughs> start playing hockey. Yeah. Or they have Christmas money that they were given that they're spending on themselves. But yeah. it is, uh, it is a Hard. real thing. Q1, you'll see an uptick for used clothing. Q3, you'll see a downtick. Summer slowdown is very real. And if you do like we do, um, I, but you don't have a key. That's where I was going with the t-shirt thing. 
Like I still only list jeans and plush. That's all I've, and I've made that a rule around this house. I'll quit and leave. I don't care. I'm not doing anything. Well, I like denim shorts too. Um, I like shorts, booty shorts and jean shorts. Um, shorts are okay. I'm kind of getting into those a little bit just because I got some in a thread up box and they sold within like two days. Yeah, they like, sell okay, really fast. Like, like I saw you sipping them out. Lightweight, yeah. I can I can get into some shorts, I think. Less measurements, easier to photograph. They ship first class and they sell really fast. And I can sell like Walmart brand denim jeans for 16, 18 bucks. Wow, that's really good. <laughs> so um there's just something about cut off blue jeans. You can get any brand, even generic Walmart, Kmart, mall brands. And they'll sell for more than the jeans would sell for. Um, I really like like those. But um, fortunately, I have a Keith. And Keith buys remotes and T-shirts and things wholesale. And he lists those. And that helps. We're, we're sending out. There must be a really big fire. <laughs> but people are dying down the street. And I'm like, shh. I'm just on live show. <laughs> um. Tell them to be quiet out there. Gosh. We're sending out like uh, four to five t shirts a day out of what he's listing. Very distracting. Um, so that would be one way that we get prepared actually for summer slowdown. Last year we prepped with a whole bunch of remotes, and this year Keith did a whole bunch of t shirts and stuff. Um, and then I used to switch to um, the shorts rather than the jeans because I used pre-COVID, back when the world was still normal, I could go to Goodwill and pick up 200 pairs of jean shorts for 99 cents each, like just stacks and stacks, stacks of them. Fantastic. I would just clear the rack because like, I didn't care because I knew I could sell the generics even. Yeah. Um, I haven't been to a thrift store really since... I don't know. I think we've been twice since the world opened back up and it was just, it was too much effort for me when I know I can buy wholesale. Yeah. I've only gone thrifting a couple of times. I think since January, I've probably been to the thrift store maybe three or four times. And I used to go like every week, but now being able to buy stuff wholesale, I hardly go to the thrift store because it's just a hassle. Yeah. I learned how not to have to go during the shutdown. Yeah. And then once the shutdown was over, I was like, well, this is a pain. I have to drive from store to store to store to come home with 50 pairs of jeans or 100 pairs of jeans or whatever. When I could have just stayed at home and ordered 500 to be delivered to my doorstep and just ple pleasantly worked from those. <laughs> so. yeah. And this the same thing happened to me. Like when March, when everything shut down initially, I had to turn I could just and, and didn't have to do anything. They just came to my door. I could sit and list. I didn't have to go to multiple stores and, you know, sort through the rack, get through the line, load them in my car, get home, unload them, you know, pull off thrift store tags. Um, just so much easier. Yeah, it really is. That's I think I lost you, Star. You were breaking up really bad. I can see you moving. You're blinking. Well, maybe it's just me, you guys. We'll have our own pajama party by ourselves without Star. Hopefully she comes back. Flipping daddy. Hi, I'm late feeding the baby. Yep, I just put my kids to bed a little bit ago before me and Star got on. Okay, I think we lost Megan. So let me message her real quick. I think she couldn't see me or hear me. Um, so I'm just going to quickly give her a text message and let her know. Oh, no, she's already coming back. There you are. Hi. I was supposed to message you. <laughs> oh, I'm on my phone streaming. So I have like everything else like muted, but we're back. Okay, yeah, because you were saying, you were saying, I can't see you or hear you, and I'm like, I can see you and hear you, and then you're like, it's just us, Star will come back, and then you dropped off, I'm like, no, honey, that was you. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, I can see myself. So I was like, okay, we'll just chill without her. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, but we did hear you say about being spoiled. You know, you don't have to go and take everything out, bring it home. It's easier, but. Well, I mean, and I've said this on the channel before, but. The shutdown spoiled me for everything. It, it spoiled me because I learned how to do wholesale and how not to be relying on the thrift stores. I'm really spoiled about carry out and take out now. Because I just oh, go yeah. like. And some of the places bring it out to your car now too, which is even better. Yes, I was telling Robert that when he was on, our, on the channel. Our favorite place is called Burgatory. And I just go on the app and reorder what we ordered last time with the click of a button. I roll up to the back door, I call them, roll the window down, and they drop it in the seat. <laughs> it's like a drug deal. <laughs> yeah, because you have to go around the back of the restaurant to the back door. And I call them, and I'm like, I'm star, I'm in the Gold Buick. And they come out and put it in my seat for me, and I'm like, hi. <laughs> I'm like, I'm here, and then you slip them some money. <laughs> I'm so, no, I even tip on the app. I don't bother. <laughs> it's so, I've just gotten to where I'm like, I've learned how to, I guess, do a lot without having to go out in the world. And we were already, we had hermit tendencies and we were very reclusive before all this. Now we both work from home and we had to do without going out into society for a year. So I don't know that I want to rejoin. <laughs> yeah, I think it it kind of had some blessings in disguise that came along with it. And I think the good thing was it really kind of pushed all of us out of our normal comfort zone to try a new way of sourcing, which actually turned out to be fantastic for a lot of us. Yeah, because, I mean, wholesale had saved our business. And now it is uh, definitely what I like to do. But so one way we get prepared is we... Now that we buy wholesale, we'll buy something different and let Keith list it. Um, but that's kind of all year because he's not allowed to touch my flesh. Or your jeans. Or my jeans. He doesn't want to touch the jeans. But he's run out He's run out of inventory a couple of times during the shutdown when we were waiting on wholesale. And he had to do some flesh. And I was, like, hovering over him, like... <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you listing like that for? Manager. Did you comp that? Why are you listing it at that? And he's like, because it comped at 15. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. It came from the Disney store. You're putting it up for 30. And he's like, but it comped at 15. And I'm like, I don't care. Oh, no. Do not put my jumbo stitch in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like such a nitpick. He, he can't handle it. So we make sure we have more than enough. We actually have like four boxes left of the shirts. And we've already taped them up and wrote on the side, unlisted inventory, just to take with us. <laughs> well, it's good, though, to have just some extra laying around so you don't get caught, like, with nothing. Like, what happened? Which happened at the beginning of the shutdown. And I also have 500 plushies in Dave's warehouse down in Florida waiting for me. Waiting um, for you to come retrieve them and pull them yeah. off. Because Casey found them locally, and I'm like, well, don't ship them up here because I'm coming down in a couple months. So yeah, don't wait now. That's gonna make your cost of goods higher for the shipping. So yeah. Be so anyway. look forward to you when you get there. My, I have friends waiting for me. <laughs> Five hundred. Five hundred new friends. They all tied um, up in a bag in a warehouse. Uh, yeah, I think they're actually like in a in a cardboard pallet, like a tall. You're so nice, uh, like a gay lord. Yeah. They're, they're there. Casey keeps calling me every day. When are you coming to get these? And I'm like, when I move down there, shut up. Just give, um, me give me a couple months. I need all of May. <laughs> We're taking four days in. You've got 26 days left. We are taking the entire month to pack. And for people who think that's a little much, please remember that I am diagnosed with anxiety and OCD. So, um, Taking a month to pack for me is pretty normal. I have list after list after list um, to work through, to go through. We have a list of rooms that we want to do. And we're taking our time. And we're donating a lot. We're getting rid of a lot. And um, we don't feel rushed or like we have to make hasty decisions or whatever. 
That's good though, because then you can actually do a thorough deep cleaning. You're not just like throwing everything in boxes and then getting down there and then donating it because you're like, oh, I wasn't going to keep this anyway. So at least you're actually like doing a thorough job of like taking an inventory of everything that you have and sorting it. Yeah, and we're definitely like getting rid of a lot, like pretty much. We're taking our, all of our inventory. Um, we dropped all the hard goods out of our store and we um, donated those. I don't consider shoes or plush hard goods, but like coffee mugs and stuff like that we did. We're dropping all the remotes out this weekend and wholesaling them off. Oh, um, really? Yeah, we have like a thousand of those left, so we're just going to drop them out of eBay. We're going to drop like a thousand listings. Yeah, and you already put all that work into them? But we can ask 225 a remote, like wholesale, because we cleaned and tested them. That's true, and you've already... Okay, yeah. Yeah, so... We're dropping all those, and then um, we're taking all the plush and clothes, and we're leaving all of our furniture here except for our bed, which is brand new. We bought like a year ago for a new bed for my back, and I got a new recliner last year. Um, but other than that and like the electronics, we're not taking anything. We're just starting over all fresh. Like pots, pans, kitchen stuff? Like, wow. We did that when we left Alaska because – we kind of just had, at that point, like we were young and poor, didn't have a lot of good stuff. So a lot of the things we had were just like odds and ends from family and friends. So That's we, kind of what Alaska, we, we yeah. just got rid of everything. And when we got to Washington, we kind of went out on a shopping spree and got all new stuff. But, you know, we had saved money. So that was kind of like, you know, our little treat to go out and, and get all nice new matching things for our, our new place. Yeah, we have like a hodgepodge, like what I had before him and what, him what i had before him and what he had before me and then what family members gave to us and it's just kind of like a hodgepodge and i'm like i would rather just go start all over fresh room by room matching everything i've already got we're gonna do a star wars kitchen so i've already picked out my baby yoda crock pot and there's a um it's like a keurig but it's off brand but it's um the millennium falcon it's so cool so, so like a knockoff, like a generic Keurig. But it's called a Disney brand, but they can't call it Keurig, I guess. Yeah, okay. But I've already picked out, like, a bunch of appliances that have, like, Star Wars theme, and I'm going to do a whole Star Wars kitchen. Oh, my God. You have to do pictures and show all of us this <laughs> Yes, and I have these bookshelves picked out that look like coffins where I'm going to display all my Stephen King books, finally. They've all been in boxes for years. That'd be cool to have books displayed. I always think that looks nice, like, in an office. Yeah, we're going to actually try to um, get enough rooms that we can have an office and a library. Um, oh, slash like a separate, like, an actual, like, old-fashioned library with, like, a whole wall of bookcases? Yeah. Like, we're going to split the room, and, like, half of it's going to be bookshelves and a recliner, like, a reading nook for me. And the other half will be for him to have his um, set up for his video gaming and... That's not going to work. Video gaming. And, well, actually, you both do video games, though, right? You do it together. Yeah, so we play together. together. Yeah. Okay. And I, I read around. I can block out the world. Oh, I, used really? to get in I used to get in trouble in school because I wouldn't would be, like, reading. And and not paying attention. <laughs> none. None. They're like, what did you do today? I read two books. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do schoolwork, but I read two books. Um. So, yeah, we, we're just going to start all over. Um, That's a good so feeling, though, to be able to just kind of, like, leave all that stuff and be able to go out and pick out just, like, I don't know. I, I liked it. It was so much fun to just go out yeah. and do things for for that house and pick up. I'm really excited about all the new kitchen. I'm going to get an Instapot, uh, air fryer, a new crock pot. I've had like the crock pot from like the seventies. That was my mother's like one of those old green ones with the flowers it on like it. Like the big, like oval shaped one, like cooking. I know it's round, but it's green ceramic. Oh my and God. It's, it, it's old. The only thing I'm keeping from the kitchen is like, I have one of my grandmother's Pyrex dishes. I'm going to keep. Aww. Um, and our microwave, that's new, but for the most part, like if it's not inventory, we're not taking it and we're just starting over. Are you guys, um, going to get like a U-Haul and drive down? No, we're going to hire a truck and have it loaded up ahead and go ahead of us. Okay. Um, and then just drive our car down with stuff. Just you guys. 
Bell and our electronics and stuff. Stuff we don't trust them with. Like what? I mean, they um, inventory all of it. No. You don't understand. You don't understand nerds and their electronics. Okay. Um, my laptop. I don't have anything like super valuable, yeah. so I guess I. <laughs> my laptop costs more than most people's desktops because it's a gaming laptop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We just spent a lot of money on a gaming PC, but it's it's big. It's not like a laptop, so I don't know. I don't know how that's gonna work when we. Well, Keith has that too. It's a tower, but I mean, you can fit three dead bodies in my trunk, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> That's terrible. No, <laughs> when we bought it, I weighed down in it. And I'm like, how many more of me could you fit in here? Like that was something you needed to check before buying it, like a qualification. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun to see their faces when you climb into the trunk and you look out at them. How many more of me do you think we could fit in here? <laughs> the car dealership people were probably like, what is wrong with uh, I always buy mine private. I always buy used private. I've never had. I haven't had a car note in like fifteen years. No, I mean, oh, you didn't go to a dealership and get it. You got it like private party. Um, yeah, yeah. See, I'm scared of meeting up with private party people because of like the Craigslist murder people. Like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh no, that is scary. But we always take like a horde of people. It might be different once we move. But like out here, the couple of times we had to replace the car and we went and got a new one. His grandfather was a mechanic. He worked for Heinz for years fixing their trucks. So we take him and his uncle who's a mechanic. And then we like to have this whole entourage of people that go with me. And they're like, we're going to look at it. And you're not going to rip her off. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do an inspection and a test drive. <laughs> they basically do. But um, I mean, you should. No, that's good. You should do that. But And then you bring a, a little handgun too or some pepper spray just in case. Yeah, that, well, I think I scare people off when I climb in the trunk. They're like, yeah, like Whoa. How many bodies can we fit in? Here? <laughs> no, but we're going to take his his uh, tower off in. I have a big, big sedan, like an old Buick. You'll be able to fit a lot of stuff in there then. They've got a big yeah. trunk. They do, and a big back seat. <laughs> um, we used to load that thing up when we thrifted. <laughs> we put so much stuff in there from the bends and everything. Um, anyway, I digress. We're all talking about my move because you got me talking about what I'm excited about. Okay, you guys, back to back to summer slowdown and our pajama party. You guys haven't noticed I'm wearing pajamas. Got some big sweatpants and a t-shirt. <clears throat> well, this is what I wear to sleep in. I have um, matching pants. I have my jeans on still, but I have plush Halloween pajama pants I wear with this shirt. I haven't worn jeans. I think I, I told someone this on my YouTube the other day. I haven't worn jeans in like two years. I just wear leggings. <laughs> I live in jeans. I'm so comfortable in them. I mean, after leggings were invented, it was like, how can you go back to like stiff death? <laughs> I mean, if I was skinny again, maybe. Anybody can wear leggings. No. I would not be comfortable in them. I would be so self-conscious and so aware. Wear a long shirt with like a tunic top. Why not? Well, I, I'm comfortable in my jeans. All right. You and your jeans. You are what keeps me in business because yeah. I sell jeans. <laughs> you keep doing that. I need customers. So when we get ready for summer slowdown, we usually just wholesale a bunch of stuff that's not jeans for Keith to work on. What do you do? So what I've done this past year in prep, I bought a bunch of swimsuits. So I've already listed those, but now I don't have my ratio of like jeans to other things a little bit better. So I've got a couple hundred swimsuits listed. I got a palette of show me your moo dresses from Joe Mar when they were doing a big sale. So I've got a bunch of dresses I'm listing. Show me your moo. What? <laughs> this makes me think of my grandma. Just show me your moo. Um, the dresses are selling great. All of them are like bridal bridesmaids dresses, which I didn't think would sell very well, but I'm selling several a week. So the dresses are doing fantastic, maybe because it's wedding season and people are doing weddings again. I don't know. But I've got the swimsuits. I've got the dresses. I'm doing more shorts, more um, T-shirts. And then I also got a little bit of men's stuff from Macy's a couple months ago. And that stuff has been selling consistently as well. So instead of just listing more denim, I'm really trying to do some swimsuits and dresses and kind of branch out. Um, 
So hopefully this year my sales won't be like this. It will just be more like this. Yeah, that's kind of like what ours do. My jeans definitely go down. Yeah. My plush come up. I don't know why, but in July and August, I always sell tons of plush. That's weird. I think that's Christmas time, like Christmas gift thing, not like back to school. But. Yeah. I always do have a theory that maybe teachers bought the smaller, cheaper ones for gifts or like prizes, prize boxes or something. We may have lost Megan again. So I'll just keep talking. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we um, noticed that our plush sells towards the end of summer. Again, she dropped out. Um, but my jeans definitely kind of go down a little bit. There she is. There she is. Hi. I don't know what's going on. I don't your know if your internet, my internet sucks. or what. It's your internet and it sucks. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Maybe. I don't know. I can hear you just fine. I don't know if you can't see me. Okay. <laughs> can you see me? What's going on? Okay. Um, okay. I can see you. Okay. I can see you and hear you. Can you okay. see me and hear me? Yep. Okay. I think I think your internet sucks, but it keeps freezing um, up, so I don't know, like. Yeah, you freeze up every once in a while, but then you unfreeze. I don't know. I see you just fine now. But um, I was saying our jeans definitely do go down. Our plush will come back up at the end of Q3, going into Q4. But it, usually it's what Keith lists that keeps us going all summer. Um, That's so nice to have someone else, like, hitting you with, like, other listings just so you can kind of, like, balance it out so it's not just, like, one steady down downturn in the summer yeah i mean if you look right now in our store i'm pretty sure in fact let's take a trip on over to my back end and have a look um i'll share my screen with you guys and we'll go ahead and just kind of pull up my category and see what i have yay little little preview i haven't looked at your store in a while so i'm curious to see how many listings do you have right now uh right over that much 21 22. 21 22. These are old contacts, so I like have to get really close to the screen to see anything. Uh, it's twenty one, twenty two, and I have to put auctions in tonight. But that's just clearance poopy shit. I'm trying to get rid of. I keep swearing a lot. I do that when I have guests on. It's like I forget I'm live. I'm like I'm hanging out with my friend. <laughs> um. All right, so just let's just look at how many jeans I have in the store because I have backed way off of those. I had four boxes of thread up and then I did not purchase any more jeans after that. I said I was going through those four and until we moved, I wasn't going to do any more. So just men's and women's jeans. I only have 338. Oh, wow. That's not very many. So you're pretty diversified. I mean, if you have 2000 listings and not even a quarter is um, jeans, that's pretty. Yeah. Cool. I didn't realize you were that. Um, I want to look at our plush. That's mainly what I've been listing on. Now I want to pull up mine too. I'm going to look on my computer and see. 554 plush. Wow. But that's, so I, that's great because that's not an item that has like a season. I feel like no. I sell anytime. And real quick, I'm just going to do a quick search for remotes because we're going to drop all those, like I said, this weekend. We're, we were actually going to do them um, last weekend, but we forgot. <laughs> this is how organized we are with our bullet journals. We forgot to order the box that we shipped the remotes in wholesale. And so Saturday morning, we woke up all gung-ho, ready to go upstairs and get all the remotes and bring them down and make the lot. So we were like, oh, we don't have the boxes. So we had to order them. Um, and they will be here tomorrow, I believe, or Thursday. And um, there's 402 because there's multiple quants. See, I thought we had 1,000. He must have dropped some already. Um, so I just looked. I have a total of 3,338 listings active and 963 are genes. So like a third. A yeah. Yeah. I thought it was more than that. And then, but if I go look at pants, let me look at pants, because that should be really high. 
can't. Casey's here, and he says, "What the actual f are you doing live? It's 10 p.m." <laughs> I accommodated Megan's schedule. Yeah, because I've got like, kids. You ever hear of that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know he hasn't. I've got 779 pants. So about 800 pants out of the 3,300. And then my swimwear. Let me look at swim. Do I not have a swimwear cap? I'm super stoked that I have more plush listed than jeans. That's awesome. Okay, I only have 83 swimwear. I lied to you guys. 83. And dresses. <laughs> Got 200 dresses right now. 200. I know you were working on those for a while because I was teasing you on Instagram about because I hate listing them, but I found a good way to photograph. I'm hanging them up on a wall on a hanger so it's faster. I know the pictures suck, but that's what you're gonna get. So. Well, have you looked at photo app? What photo app? I think it's called Photo Room, not Photo App. Photo Room, photo room. it's an app you can get on your phone on Apple or, and I'm not affiliated, but you can get on Apple or Android and it's free to use. Um, but they do have a pay feature where you can actually um, remove the background from more than one at a time. So like Vicky uses it and she'll do a whole photo session of like 500 pictures and then run them through in bulk. And it takes like a minute and a half, she says, to do all 500. And then there's someone else in my group. His name's Richard or Robert. And I'm so sorry. I don't know your name. Please don't kill me or hate me. Um, I can't. It's, I'm brain farting. I know it's an R name. Um, he said that he actually has the pay feature. And he takes his pictures in the app and then doesn't have to convert them. So when he's all done, they're already done. And just uploads them to the computer. Um, and it it makes them look here. You guys, let me share my screen again. Let me share my screen again and show you um, some of our new listings. Now we didn't do the pay one. Once we move and we get settled, um, we're going to pay for the pay version. And I will be doing them in bulk and running them all through. But because we're only using the free version and you have to um, change them one by one it is a little more time consuming so we you can see we only changed the first one. Oh wow that looks great to see the difference yeah that's bright white that's using the um photo room app so how would that look though because i'm hanging up the dresses on a hanger on the wall like i'm not yeah a mannequin i have some of those let me show you does it show like the hanger or? Sometimes it just depends on how it grabs it. Let me see if I have any dresses. <laughs> see, I've been I've been going through and changing the front photo of a lot of our older stuff as I do the unsolds every morning. That's a good idea. At least it refreshes it a little bit. I think that's good for the algorithm in general. Well, here's a sweater dress. So th that's what it looks like. Okay, so you can still see the hanger, but it doesn't look bad. No, and it just depends on how it grabs it, because it has some where it will take out the hanger, um, or even the whole mannequin, and sometimes it leaves the mannequin in, because our male mannequin's white. I'm done using mannequins. I don't even know if I've been done that. I'm, I don't, and it's too time consuming for me to put stuff on a mannequin and put the arms on and turn it and do pictures. It's gonna be a flat lay, or I'm gonna hang it on a hanger on the wall. I ain't got time for that anymore. Yeah. So if you don't want to pay for it, it's super awesome. You could just change the first photo. And it's a little more fun. Time. Yeah, it's a little more time consuming. And then I always feel like here, let me let me show you some of my plush. Sometimes I feel like when you get into it, um, it it it's probably because I'm most there's another dress. See it? Okay. So there's the hanger, but yeah, that doesn't look bad. Yeah, I do all my dresses hanging up too. I don't well, I, I have was never. doing flat lays with them because I was stupid and was like, I don't know how to do a dress. Like, and they look terrible on the floor. Like, you have to hang them. I'm so. You I have to hang them. 50 like that. I decided hanging them was a lot better and looked nicer, easier to photograph. 
Yes. Well, we had a full mannequin at one point way back when. I don't even know if you remember her, but do you remember Lola Pearl? Nope. That was her name, Lola Pearl. <laughs> she was a full length mannequin. I took two pictures with her. My back hurt for like two weeks and I swore her off and we sold her to some drama kids that needed her for a play. Um, I'm trying to find one, guys. I think this is one. So if I do the front photo, it looks all nice, right? Yeah, Professional. Looks great. And then it's gray in the background on the rest. And he has damage. But I think that drives me bash batty. <laughs> I caught myself there. Um, that drives me batty because of my OCD, I think. But I that still think it was really good. Your gallery pictures. I'm surprised, you know, with, you know, with the stuffed animals, they have like, they don't have like perfect edges. Um, that looks fantastic. Like it cr cropped it. I don't know how you say it, but cut it out of the background. It, yeah, it cut it out really well. You don't see any of the little edges in between the different fur. Pieces. Yeah, but it's not so great with white ones like. Oh, um, Mickey Mouse, it'll cut his hands off because they're white gloves, or if they have like white legs or white manes of hair, um, it will sometimes screw those up and I can't use them. But other plush like this, it looks great. Yeah, that looks beautiful. But I hate once I get in there. Yeah, it looks nice when you're just scrolling through the gallery because all you see is the nice cover photos. I look like every morning after I do my unsolds and I fix everything, I go to my actives and I sort by newest in. And I just kind of, just for like 30 seconds, I just kind of scroll down and have that little satisfying, oh, aren't they pretty? I do that too sometimes. Maybe, maybe I have some OCD as well. I do it every morning. As soon as I finish my insults and I'm finishing my coffee before I get my shower, I go and I scroll through and I just look at them and I'm like, oh, they're so pretty. I do that at, in bed at night. Like I'll just scroll through and I don't, I'm not even like looking for anything. I'm just like admiring. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it is what it is. So if you guys don't have photo app, photo room, I keep calling it photo app, photo yeah, room. Said photo room he corrected us put it on app apple um crapple trash products or android why are you talking bad about apple are let's you, talk about apple are you an android user yes oh, if i, I wanted to throw my money in the trash i would just throw my money in the trash okay. i converted from android a couple years ago and i don't think i'll be going back i, I like i had apple. one iphone ever when the first one came out, and I will never go. Wow. But you know they've come a long way since. The first yeah, but they're still out. about five years behind Android. <laughs> Have you seen how I take my full length jean pics? You guys can't do that with your apples. What? Do you, what? All right. So I don't know if you can see. Oh, I took a picture. <laughs> I don't want to look at myself, but I guess I'm going to have to. You're going to have right. to. So where's the hell? I have no depth perception. So if I was looking at a pair of jeans. Okay. It's really hard to show you. Okay. Say I'm a pair of jeans. I can't get it. I can't get the depth perception. I wanted to focus on something so you can see what I'm doing, but I'm not going to be able to do it. Well, what does it do? I'm talking all this smack. It takes a picture and goes, frunk. What? Yeah. If I could just get my depth perception to cooperate. Almost. I'll try it one more time. I can't get it. I cannot, like, depth perception-wise, my eyes won't do this. But it basically, if it has the thing in the picture, like, if you're holding your camera up and you have your jeans out full length on, like, a board, and your normal view has, like, you know, you can only get part of the jeans, you push that one button I keep trying to push, and it puts it all. Oh, flat. Like, it changes the angle? No, it changes the size. It goes, we have three lenses. Okay. 
Mom has two lenses, I think. Yeah, my. No, we have three. We have three. Okay, so it allows you to do like a. I'm going to show you my uh, lip thing. Okay. If I have no depth perception at all, so we're going to just sit there all night while I try to push a button. I know my old Android did something cool with like. I don't know. I think it had like an LG G6 or something, and it had two cameras, and it would allow you to do like wide angle photos, which was super cool. But now yeah, so do that on iPhone, so it's not. I took cool. this, okay. and then I took the button and took that. Oh, it does it change the um, aspect ratio? Yeah. It so from a square, from the square one by one to the. No, that's that's still a one by one square. No, it's not. It it looks like portrait, like a. Yeah, because I cut it off for eBay, but I don't know what to. Did I even share my screen there? I saw the jeans. Okay, um, I don't know what to call it because I never know what to call it, and I'm always so dumb about it. Got to put my finger on it. Did you see it? I see your hand in front of the. Okay, so let's say that this is this is a one by one square, and that's what you're looking at. You push that button, and then it, it's still a one by one square, but you see the whole can. It like zooms out. Yeah, wide angle lens maybe. Okay. I wish Keith was the type of person that would come in and tell me when he can hear me, not you know struggling. I think she froze again. Maybe it's the wide angle because my my Android I can do a cool wide angle. Yeah, so like I don't I'm have here. to. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Hello. She can't hear me or see me. Okay. It cut off. Can you hear me and see me? I can hear you now. Okay. I think it's called a wide angle lens. So if I hold my camera up on pants that are laid out long and I put it in one by one square mode and all I'm seeing is like from the butt cheeks to the hem and I push that button, it goes half, it goes 0.5% on the phone. I don't know how else to explain it. That's what it says it's doing. <laughs> and then it all of a sudden I can see all the jeans. Okay, you can do that on iPhone too. I know what you're talking about. It like zooms out so you can see more. Yeah, maybe. I can do that on my iPhone. I know we what you're talking about because if you with the jeans when they're long, like it's you have to like hold your phone up super high to get like a full. Yeah, we've well, been able to do that. Zooms out. Yeah, we've been able to do that for like five models now. I mean, I don't know how long iPhone's been doing it, but I can. Not that long. It. It's like your newest one. <laughs> He's a, a computer nerd, so Some he tech savvy working. person in the chat is probably like, "These girls are stupid." It's called this. <laughs> like we don't even know. Well, type it out and tell us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if someone knows what we're talking about, say what it is. <laughs> but I do know that every time a new iPhone comes out. And they're like, oh, we have all these new features. And me and Keith are like looking at each other like, so my phone I got in 2017 did that. My phone that I got in 2018 did that. Yeah, that's true. They don't have like new exciting stuff. No, um, you're just paying for the name. My phone is at like 5%. So if for some reason I go away, it's probably because my phone died. Just a heads up. Oh, well, we're over an hour and we're just chatting. So we can get off. Um, do you want to plug your stuff again before we go? Do I want to what? Plug your stuff. I want to look smart. Plug your stuff. Tell us your YouTube and all that. Oh, my. <laughs> what are you talking about? Plug your stuff. <laughs> My Instagram is Mawinnie Megan, so last name, first name, M-A-W-H-I-N-N-E-Y, Megan, M-E-G-A-N. YouTube is Megan Mawinnie, so just first name, last name. eBay is shop underscore the underscore Sandcastle if you want to check out my store. 
And that's it. I don't do Twitter. I don't do TikTok. That's it. And you're in the Facebook group. So if yeah, you guys. I'm in your group. I'm in Casey's group with my regular names, just my personal account. Yep. And in our group, she is a moderator. Yes. So don't say anything bad. I'll delete your comments and ban so you for life. You can tag her. There's my group. It's free to join. Um, you can tag her and ask her if you have questions about jeans or anything else. And I think the takeaway from this, oh gosh, Bill and David have over 1,600 pairs of jeans. I just saw that. Wow. They have me beat. But you know what? There's two of them doing that work though. And this is just me. So you said, <laughs> well, they are also moving to just doing jeans and sneakers. I actually really? bought all of them. I got a huge wholesale lot of plush off of them last year towards the end of the year. And I have, I'm going out next month to get the rest of their plush from them before we move. Wow. That is a very, what is it? Niche, niche market. But that's great though. Cause you'll be so yeah. knowledgeable on that kind of product. Um, I so they're only going to be doing sneakers and jeans and I'm giving the rest of their plush. I'm happy about that. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, I think the takeaway from this, guys, is to diversify, diversify, diversify. Don't get yourself locked into one thing. Because even if you have that one thing that doesn't slow down in the summer, that's going to be the one thing that slows down in Q4 or Q1 or Q2. It may just be opposite of, like, the regular market trend, but they'll slow down at some point. Unless yeah. you're just selling, like, iPhones for, like, $5 in free shipping, then maybe you'll never have a problem. <laughs> but, yeah just give your stuff away you'll never have a problem um but yeah diversify because it's you know every season is going to be different on what's going to sell and if you get global shipping on there no matter how you do it if you ship internationally i should say that should help you out too because it's always the opposite seasons on the opposite end of the world and in the south it stays warmer longer than it does in the north and um there's more touristy places is what I'm trying to say. Keith's on the phone. It's distracting me. He's on the phone with Casey. Um, so, yeah, that's your takeaway. Diversify. Get yourself on more platforms. If you haven't tried List Perfectly yet, there's a code in my description box you can use for 30% off your first month. If I you don't it. Want it. Yep. I if you don't like it, you can, thank you. If you don't like it, you can cancel, but you can get 30% off just to try it. I can cross post 50 items to Poshmark and Wakari. So that's 100 total from eBay, including load time and getting up to get a cup of coffee and go pee while they load in under 10 minutes. Okay. Mine's taking longer than that. And I'm doing like 10 at a time. Maybe we need to talk about this. I think it's your internet, to be honest. We have really good internet, okay? Like, because my husband does the gaming. Like, he got us like the highest package. But it keeps going like in and out, like when we're streaming. So, I don't know. But we have like a high bandwidth or megabytes, whatever that term is. We have a really good one. Are you doing it on a hardwired modem or a wireless Wi Fi? Wireless. Anyways, I can only do like 10 at a time on for the list perfectly because it takes forever to load. So I guess Thank you for the super chat, Mia. Um, it's probably your internet. If it's not oh, even holding the live stream. You know what I should ask you about the list perfectly is. Um, I'm assuming it's possible to cross post something twice. Is that true? Like it won't tell you if you've already done an item? No, not unless you're using their back end. And I don't even know how to do that because I, I just use the bulk. Okay. To be honest. So I have to like edit everything too and put in the skew line. Yeah, I thought it transferred like everything, but I've noticed. I still have to select the category and on shoes, I have to manually put in like the size. It doesn't copy over that. And I did get the, the one where you can do the bulk editor. So I thought it included like fully transferring that stuff, but. It should. Huh. Maybe I need to look at it more cause I'm, yeah. Yeah, they have tutorials you can watch. I think I've watched a couple of them, and then I was like, whatever, I'll just do it on my own. I can figure it out. Yeah, I just select, like, 50, and then say stop selecting, 
and I pick Poshmark and I pick Macari, save 50 plush. And I start opening up 100 tabs and I go get a cup of coffee and go to the bathroom and come back and it's done. And then I just fly through them. And I think I've watched your, you did a tutorial on it too. I think it was your tutorial that I watched. The seven minute one? Yeah, it's probably a short one. I don't have a long attention span, so I'm not going to sit down for like an hour. And yeah. <laughs> um, it might be your internet. I would see if you can't hardwire in your modem. Well, the your... router's upstairs in the loft with my husband's gaming stuff, and my office is downstairs. Something's taking my computer upstairs. It is a laptop, though. I'm just making excuses. I, don't... <laughs> yeah. I could go up there, I guess. <laughs> I would try that first, and then if it doesn't improve, then then troubleshoot from there, but you have to troubleshoot. <laughs> and the first thing would be, Keith would tell you, Wi-Fi sucks. You need to be hard. I'm hired hardwired in for this. Um, I only run the Wi-Fi when I work, but um, for live shows, I always see, hardwire. This, oh, my son's screaming at me. I'm, my video has gone in and out like four times since we've been live. It's Wi-Fi. Okay, we'll wrap it up. Well, amazing, guys. Go be productive. Go make some money. Thank you for having me. Take care, yeah. you guys. Thanks for coming on. And uh, you guys all, thank you for joining us. See you later. Bye.